Jim. Welcome to EJ's Jim. A guide to elevate your mindset. I have a special guest today, and I'm going to let her introduce herself. I get to introduce myself. Yeah, you get. I, I let all my guests introduce themselves. See, you haven't uh, been listening to the podcast. That's not we got to get her to listen to the podcast. Not true. I let all not my true. guests introduce themselves. And then I might say a little blurb about you. Well, let, let, let's get some clarity. I do listen to your podcast. Uh, That's how I knew certain people were up there. <laughs> okay, it's all good. But I don't come in at the very beginning. So uh, that's where I fall at. Mm -hmm. uh, I am Fiona Shivers. Mm -hmm. I am a wellness uh, coach and as far as holistically. I'm an herbalist. Mm -hmm. I am a track coach. Mm -hmm. I am a mother I am an uh, entrepreneur. Everything. I'm a traveler. <laughs> I love life. And I'm the owner here at Earth Essentials. Yes, she is. And I want to say, this is, all right, this is, I think I met you. It was a long time ago. And my it's man Breeze behind the camera, even back when I was working with Breeze. Before you met. Before, had. probably even before <laughs> that. You know what I mean? I met, um, I, I was getting razor bumps. Mm -hmm. And I met somebody at a barbershop. I don't even remember his name. And he was like, I know this lady. I know this lady. You should check her out. You should check her out. And um, I guess he gave me your info. He did. And then I might, I think I called you or I texted you. You called me on the phone and I remember the <laughs> phone call. It was so funny because after, after, <clears throat> after the phone call, I called the person up that gave me my number. I was like, uh -huh. who is this guy? Because uh -huh. <laughs> you called me yeah, and you yeah, were yeah, telling yeah. me what you needed. And yeah. then you went into about how you wanted stuff because you wanted to you know, smell a certain way. Uh -huh. for the ladies. Uh -huh. You needed something for your skin to smell. It, it went all into about the ladies. I'm like, who is this guy on the phone? Like, what in the world? But then the face to face, it was totally different. Mm -hmm. It was totally different. It was cool, funny. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Cool. And this is my homie Fiona. I'm telling you, we've been rocking with her forever. And wow. and you you started this, you know. First off, I want to know how did you find out about health and wellness? When did you learn about the home <laughs> remedies? When did it start? I was born into it. My um, grandmother, mm -hmm. my grandmother on my mother's side, my, my maternal grandmother, uh, mm -hmm. R.R.P. Catherine Shivers. Mm -hmm. She was, both my sets and my grandparents were farmers, mm -hmm. but my grandmother was an herbalist herself. She oh. made all tinctures, she made mm -hmm. soaps, mm -hmm. she made salves. Mm -hmm. There was no such thing as going to the doctor unless you broke a bone. Mm. So, and, and we didn't get sick. And mm -hmm. if we did get sick, we were fine within a matter of, of days, mm -hmm. um, if not a matter of hours. Mm -hmm. So I grew up around, I spent every summer in the South with her. Every, really? In the, until I moved down What here. part of, like, was it North Carolina? Or Eastern, was, North Eastern North Carolina. Eastern North Carolina. Rural Eastern North Carolina, a little mm -hmm. town called Parmalee. Mm -hmm. Very small. Um, we, yeah, I think we still do. We, there is a caution light. <laughs> There's a caution light, wow. very rural town. It's a historical town because it had one of the first black schools there mm -hmm. um, in that town, um, East End. Mm -hmm. But that is where my grandmother's from, my grandparents. That was the little small home. The house that I spent every summer in was the home that my grandfather bought for her as their wedding gift when mm -hmm. they got married. Very, very small. Like the bedroom was, it's probably bigger than the bedroom. Wow. This is probably, wow. That I had to share with my cousin. Wow. Yeah, so I loved it. I, she had everything. She, she grew all the vegetables in the back. They had their own chickens. My mm -hmm. grandfather hunted. They fished. Mm -hmm. Everything was there, and she went out for the things she couldn't get, like rice and mm -hmm. flour and bread, mm -hmm. even though she made bread also. Mm -hmm. But um, that's the kind of household I grew up, a very self-sufficient household, and mm -hmm. that's where my start came from. Mm -hmm. That was the start. Mm -hmm. And then from then on, I always had an interest of doing everything naturally because Grandma did it naturally. Wow. She, she had teas hanging from the barn. Yeah, teas. Go out, mm -hmm. Yeah, she would go out to the yeah. barn. Mm -hmm. And she'll pluck off tea. She grew strawberries, mm -hmm. peppermint. I mean, I just remember all these different things, mm -hmm. and everything had a usage. It wasn't just there for decoration. Gotcha. It, it had a use for sweet grass. Mm -hmm. I never understood how with the the properties of sweet grass. The kids always say, "Oh, Grandma Catherine." Everybody called my grandma Grandma Catherine. Mm -hmm. Grandma Catherine got sweet grass. If you chew it, it tastes sweet. That wasn't true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it smells sweet, but the oh. properties were spiritual, and I didn't really? know that. Yes, mm -hmm. there were spiritual properties to it, mm -hmm. and I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, being young, you hear things, but you don't understand 
the true purpose and how great it is until you get older and you put two and two together. But I also feel my work is ancestral because I feel like I'm carrying on a lineage of people that came before me because mm -hmm. some things just come natural. Right. And then when I look back to research it, because I have a medical background, right. and when I look back to research it, I'm right. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, mm -hmm. but it, it came to me before I researched mm -hmm. it. So. I give homage to my ancestors. I don't think this is. It's in, I think it's in my DNA. Mm. You know, we carry our lineage with us, in Ooh, our in our blood yeah. through each life. You know, think about it. Mm. We have the blood of the very first person that ever walked on yes, this earth, original, still flowing original in our bodies. Mind. Right? Yep, people don't know that. They and you, you know, you got to give respect to that. Mm -hmm. To think that what we do is all us. Mm -hmm. That's ego. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, that's arrogance. Mm -hmm. And I I know I can I can't do anything. I'm guided everything right. that I do. But like I said, I do have a medical background. So when I went to school, I went to school for um, animal science mm -hmm. and biology. Mm -hmm. And then when I worked in veterinary medicine, I worked in a holistic animal hospital for a very long time. And that's where I really got my feet wet mm -hmm. because everything there was tea pills, herbal tinctures, mm -hmm. moxibustion, acupuncture. Mm -hmm. So I got to dive deep and then I started studying and taking courses for myself in holistic mm -hmm. health and herbalism mm -hmm. and and um, wellness and nutrition and things like that. And so mm -hmm. you, know, you got to have your piece of paper, your certification to back right, it up, the right. science to back right, it up. Right. And it just spawned from there. While I was in college, I started, you know, making my own things. Mm -hmm. and it just spawned from there. Where did you study? I went to NC State for pre-veterinary medicine. Mm -hmm. And so I studied animal science, but I ended up <laughs> starting a business while in college to help mm -hmm. pay the bills. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I'm a nerd, like uh -huh. what I don't know, I want to know. Right. So one day I was like, you know, people keep asking me to buy these things. Maybe I should make a business out of it. Mm. And so I said, let me see what I let me see what I can do to help me in my business skills. So I t started taking some business courses at Wake Tech mm -hmm. on the weekends. And I realized I didn't know anything about business. Wow. And I didn't know a lot. And life is a business. You it know, is. just from just from weekend courses, like well, life is a business. There's so much I need to know. Like even if I don't do it, mm -hmm. I want to make sure I know how it's done. Mm -hmm. So I went back to school after my animal science degree and got a business degree. Right. And I went back to school after that and got another degree, another degree. <laughs> it was all just business, 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 global business, entrepreneurship, leadership, business management, accounting, all those things encompass. And still while getting my hands wet working in veterinary medicine. Wow. And by then, I had started my own pet sitting company. I had my own animal rescue wow. group. I was working <laughs> for an acupuncture, a veterinary acupuncturist. Mm -hmm. And then my acupuncturist, she taught me so much. She's um, from China herself. Mm -hmm. And every time I would go there, she would sit with me for hours and just teach me everything that she knew of everything she had on the shelf. So I was blessed to have that. And then wow. study more online. The holistic health school I went to online. Um, I'm not going to prop them up right now because I want people to make their own choices. True, true. And I don't want to fall when there's a, there's a lot of good schools out here mm -hmm. and I want people to make their own choices. I did two different schools online, mm -hmm. but I actually learned how to make soaps from a sister in Ghana mm. who teaches online and she taught me virtually mm -hmm. um, online how to make how to make the raw black soap out there. Oh so, man, that that green soap I used, I love that soap. What the, is what is in it? What's in it? <laughs> the neem is it the neem? neem. Man, the I love that soap. Neem is an antibacterial That's what I use. plant. I use that every day. Mm -hmm. It keeps the it keeps the bacteria off your skin mm -hmm. and internally also. So that is your mm. it's it's an antibiotic pretty much. Really? It's, yeah, it's antibacterial and it also softens your skin and helps mm. tone out your skin. It's really great. It's indigenous to India, actually. Really? But it grows anywhere where the climate is, is conducive to it, which Africa. Mm -hmm. Like, you can grow, I don't, I don't know if there's anything in Africa you can't grow. Mm. Everything grows. But it is indigenous to India, and mm -hmm. it's a big, pretty plant, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, the, but it, if you ever taste it, it's extremely, extremely bitter. Mm -hmm. Extreme, but it's so good for the skin. Really? Yeah. Okay, so this is the question I want to ask, and I'm not trying to offend anybody, but this is just trying to give people a different perspective. You know, my show is a guide to elevate your mindset, and it's all about gaining information. It is. And what is health to you? Because, you know, nowadays mm. they're telling people to inject themselves with a vaccine or take a pill or whatever the case may be. And it's, it's a lot of ways you can take care of yourself mind body soul spirit everything skin everything so what is health to you what you just described is called holistic health with mm. the w the whole, the whole body thing. Yes. yes you can't heal one without the other 
Can you, if you can, Breeze, can you rewind and, and, and play that back? Can you say that again? You cannot heal one part without the other. We are a whole and we have to function in synchrony, mm -hmm. in synthesis. And if we don't do that, we will forever be disjointed. Mm -hmm. So when people come in here asking for something, I had an example last night. A young lady came in looking for sage. Mm -hmm. She said, I feel tired all the time. Uh -oh. and I don't wanna... Okay, well, you're jumping to the sage. What do you eat? Mm. Tell me what you're eating. Right. You automatically know it's something spiritual. Mm -hmm. It could just be something internal that you're doing to yourself. Mm -hmm. So when we, when we speak about whole health, we speak about health and self. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm everything here because I'm a spiritualist, I'm a coach, I'm a wellness yeah, that's person. Yeah, that's why we're here, baby. You yeah. have you uh -huh. have to eat mm -hmm. what your body tells you it needs. We, ha we, cannot, we cannot live to eat. We have to eat to live. So... Not what you want, but what your body say it needs. Mm -hmm. If you are tired, you don't have enough nutrients in your body. Yep. What is that you're eating? Are you eating a bunch of dead food? Mm -hmm. We have to eat something that is live to get those nutrients. Live meaning raw. You got to have something fermented in your diet to help your gastrointestinal tract break down those acids and get some break down the foods and keep things flowing like you're supposed to. Mm -hmm. It's like putting the uh, liquid plumber in the toilet, making sure the pipes don't clog you don't right. have that extra everything and you want the waste out your body yes you know, it's not yes it's, you shouldn't be ashamed to say i need to eat something that's going to make me use the bathroom because whatever your body doesn't absorb needs to push out because mm -hmm. if you leave it in there it is now a toxin in your mm -hmm. body your body attacks it that's this you have autoimmune diseases mm -hmm. you have inflammation mm -hmm. you have cancers Cancer. yep. exactly yep. and it's all from our diet mm -hmm. and when we think about the meat Mm -hmm. and these um, sugars, mm -hmm. <laughs> high fructose corn syrup. Think about the animals, number one. Most of the farming now is co coag farms, meaning you got big farms that just mass produce animals yep. to push out for money. Yep. And if you ever visit these farms, remember I said my family's from Eastern Carolina, the chicken farm was three miles up the road and you could smell it all day long nonstop. Mm -hmm. The hog farm was less than a mile up the street. Oh, smelly. Oh my God, mm -hmm. it's the worst ever. But if you go visit these, these supposed farms, mm -hmm. the animals barely get sunlight. They're wow. in cages. A lot of cows now come with holes on the side of their stomachs where they can just put into their stomach what they want them to eat. <laughs> And these are the I'm ones. These are the ones that are producing foods that they consider nutritious because they want steroids and antibiotics. So to make it easier, yes, you can just make a little turntable in the side of a cow's stomach, pull it out, put the food in that you want, close it back up. It sounds mechanical and robotic, but yes, it's true. Anybody can look it up and find it for themselves. Or you find the cows that have been in such a tight, small space so long, standing in their own feces, they can't stand anymore. Mm -hmm. So now. They're sitting there on their hocks and in their sores and it's yep. nasty and it's filth. Mm -hmm. And this is what you're eating. You're eating the trauma. Yep. You're eating the stress. Mm -hmm. You're eating the disease. Mm -hmm. And you're injecting all that life force into your life force. And right. now it's all merged. And people don't think about the trauma of the mm -hmm. animals also. Mm -hmm. You hear about certain cultures that like to cook their animals live and eat it because they said the blood is fresh and it's less stress on them. Mm -hmm. Again, I repeat that. They cook the animal alive <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> because it's less stress wow. in the blood in which they're about to. And think, this, just think about that right yeah. now. You yeah. know. So back to the whole, the point in whole. When you're putting these foods into your body, mm -hmm. you're injecting that not just the toxins from that animal, the life force from that animal. But where are our canines to shred this meat up? We're not cats, we're not dogs, right. we're not large animals. Right. So that meat that we're eating, we didn't properly break it down in chewing it. Right. So it's sitting in our bodies mm -hmm. for God knows how but long. But that's how you get the cancer. That's the and stuff that's that exactly. people do not know about. That's exactly. And before, before we go on, how did we get into a society where people are kind of misinformed? That's what I want to say about health. Because that's why I wanted to have this conversation. I come from an environmental background. I, I was an environmentalist for many a years. I ran an environmental organization. Um, when we think environment, it's like we think health. We think the water quality, air quality. Environment is a whole entire compass in which you live. Mm -hmm. um, if I have a sidewalk, that's my environment. If I have a bank, that's my environment. Mm -hmm. If I have trees outside of breed, that's my environment. Mm -hmm. So 
what the number one thing that people always think has been polluting our environment is pollutions from cars and, mm -hmm. and factories. But actually the number one environmental factor that's tearing down our ozone layer is actually big farming. Yeah. It's yeah. the gas yeah. from the animals mm -hmm. that we are producing mm -hmm. for meat. Mm -hmm. And so the push for meat, 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 meat comes from those who make the money. Yes. <laughs> so do they really care about your health? Of course they don't. They right. want the money. Just right. like people always think, oh, first thing they want to say, well, I got to die from something. No, you don't. <laughs> All right. You may that's live bad, with this. That's a bad mindset. That you may though. live that's with this your entire yeah. life. People are living longer than ever before because drugs extend your life because that's more money. Pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. So you may have diabetes and no legs and still be alive for 35 years in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. That is not a good quality of life. Right. You right. may want to die, right? but you're going to extend your life out because you have now drugs and medication to do so. Mm -hmm. You know, so saying that I'm going to eat what I want and when I die, die, that doesn't mean you're going to die. This means you're going to have a uncomfortable life, if not an intolerable life while you're here. Mm -hmm. And why would you want that when you have an option of feeling healthy? So mm -hmm. the push for me eat, eat, meat, 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 comes from those who make the money from the right, meat. That's right, where the push comes right. from. Not to say that, you know, if you eat meat, you're the worst person on earth, it's horrible. Mm -hmm. No, what I'm saying is you have to be a conscious eater mm -hmm. for your for your health. And mm -hmm. we as black people, we are the most tolerable mm -hmm. to these unhealthy lifestyles. Mm -hmm. Growing up on plantations, gr those of us who came over as slaves, we had to eat what we could get. Mm -hmm. And whatever we could get, we ate that to survive. Mm -hmm. Once you get past survival mode, you eat what you can eat to be healthy. Right. If you're not in survival mode, you need to be in protection mode. Mm. You need to be protecting your vessel. Again, we're going back yes. to the whole health. Yes. You know, you yes. got spiritual trauma, you got mental trauma, and now we're talking about physical trauma. So again, we're back in the whole health scene. Mm. The whole push for, I know in the South, for meat, 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 meat. Again, like I said, it's big co-ed farming. So we're used to that growing up because that's Southern culture, that's Southern food. We want our fried chicken, we want our fish, we want our pork chops, we want our steaks. And it's you you break bread it's fellowship around a table it tastes good you're eating but does that mean if it's a lack of it's not going to taste good right i've had some of my best meals where there was no meat ever right. served right. and right. we broke bread and have a good time like a lot of my friends they come to my house they know they're not coming to get meat mm. but they know they're going to have a good meal and they don't care right. and i'll fill a house up a cookout mm -hmm. you say cookout you think you get hamburger yeah you, you yeah. get none of that at my house right. but my yard will be filled and people will eat for hours right. and they'll leave here saying fiona i don't know how you do it it's so good just give me the recipe i'll see you later <laughs> you know it's never right. a problem it's a right. mental thing and we get addicted Yes. We get addicted yes. to these things. We get addicted to our lifestyle. Mm -hmm. We get addicted to the sugars in the food and the carbs. Yes. And then we, just like any other drug, mm -hmm. we feel we need it. Mm -hmm. But then people who come in like, I, oh my gosh, I've been flooded for detoxes since January. People want to come in and just start over, be flush, flush, flush mm -hmm. for detox. COVID has done our community a conundrum. We mm -hmm. lost a lot, yeah. but we have awakened a lot of people to mm -hmm. healthy lifestyles. I like it. And those that have come in have realized, I always suggest a two-week detox where you don't do any meat while taking this particular detox I give you. Mm -hmm. And then they don't want to go back to meat afterwards. They mm -hmm. said they had never felt so good before. Mm -hmm. that it, I'm not going to say in their lives that they can yeah. remember. Mm -hmm. that they can, I have a gentleman who said he had never had, he had, never had uh, normal blood work. Wow. Until after he started taking some of the things I suggested. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm going to tell everyone. He said, I promise I to tell everyone. He said, I've never had normal blood work. Yeah. And he suffered from a few ailments. But it's just a matter, it's a choice. Mm -hmm. Because these are, it's our lives. It's mm -hmm. your life. People can do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. But why live it a certain way when you don't have to? Right. Why suffer when you don't have to? Right, right, right. Sometimes you don't even know you're suffering. Right. It's like we say, sometimes we don't know we're enslaved. Right, right. <laughs> Sometimes right. we don't even know we're slaves, yep. you know? Right. So until you know the other side, you know, you go somewhere. I didn't even know life was like this over here. Oh, wow. I thought I had it good. It's different perspective. I different thought mindset. I had it good. Right. You know, so mm -hmm. you made a transition in yes. your life. Yes, I have. What yeah. made you transition? What made me transition was just like you said, health, the holistic part. And I started to learn about my spirit and my body and everything, how mm -hmm. everything works. And 
And I want to kind of flip it back on you so you can kind of answer the question, which made me uh, change too, as far as like the spirits, mm -hmm. like animals, just mm -hmm. like you, you, you mentioned trauma, mm -hmm. right? And if you digest that, what is it doing to your body as far as the animal going through trauma to die and you digesting mm. that same piece of meat? What is it doing to you? And that's part of, as she answers that, that's part of some of the reason why I decided to transition to. So for those that believe in karma, whether you believe in the word as karma, whether you believe it as, as circumstances, whether you believe it, however you believe it, there's always a cause and effect. Mm -hmm. No matter what we do, there's always a yin, there's a yang. So you have people that call themselves jinn. They, the, the jinn believe that everything that has life has purpose. So they never even want to step on a bug because yeah. they don't want that karma to come back on them. Mm -hmm. So when they walk, they walk very slow and they walk light. And that's, it's one of the things that distinguishes a jinn because they're being, their movements are so careful as to not hurt anything because they don't want that karma to come back. Now, think about this. Best, best perspective, I can put it for those that are not spiritualists. Um, in, a, in a sexual sense, when someone has unprotected sex, man, woman, you're having sex with everyone they had sex with. Mm -hmm. So if that person had a disease, then you contract that disease, correct? Right. So now, if I were to go into a relationship with a man who was an abuser right and his whole chain reaction was abuse with everyone he'd been in why would I expect any different from myself mm -hmm. I am now welcoming mm -hmm. that abuse into my life mm -hmm. because I already knew what happened if I eat a piece of meat that suffered mm. and was tortured mm. never saw sunlight mm. never grazed never walked wow. and then his death mm -hmm. was traumatic I take that same energy into my body and I, without even conscious mind setting, I've brought that karma into my life that I have to atone for because I took that in. Mm -hmm. I chose to be a part of that death mm -hmm. where I, I didn't kill the animal, right. but I ate of that flesh mm -hmm. and that death is now part of my, part of my hands now. Mm -hmm. So I have, I've attracted only that karma, but that energy into my body. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, oh, why do I feel this way? Mm -hmm. Oh, why is this happening to me? Or oh, why I can't keep this? You know, everything, all these different entities, everything has energy. Yes. And on a scientific yes. perspective, yes. it's literally called vibration. Mm -hmm. Before they called the smallest living particle on earth mm -hmm. the quartz. Mm -hmm. Well, they dissected the quartz and now inside the quartz, what is it called? Vibration. Vibration. Everything. What is vibration if, it, if it's not energy? Everything. Every everything is energy. Thing and you can't destroy energy. it. You can't destroy you energy. You absorb energy. Right. That's all you do. You transfer it, mm -hmm. you transfer it, mm -hmm. and you absorb it. Right. So what way are you going to transfer that energy which you absorb mm -hmm. from this animal out of your body? How are you going to atone for that? Right. How are you going to make right? Mm -hmm. You're not going to make right by just detoxing. You'll mm -hmm. make your body right by detoxing, mm -hmm. but how are you spiritually going to make that right? Yeah. You know, what do you what do you do? Mm -hmm. What do you do to make up for that karma? Because everyone has to pay for everything they do, whether right. it be now or later. Right. And, you know, and for those who believe in multiple lives, uh, there, there, there are plenty of cultures who believe that if you don't atone in this life, then you come back hmm. to get it right or either to pay for what you didn't pay for previously. Right. You know, that, like I said, I'm speaking in different culture aspects. Right, right. So say I'm that person that believes that, you know, this is not my only life. So... If I'm going around, I don't care what I'm ingesting or how it died or where it came from. And I'm eating, I'm eating, I'm eating it. And let's say I'm killed in a car accident. I'm gone. It's over for me. Mm -hmm. I may come back next time as a pig in a farm. Mm -hmm. And now I may have to go through that same yeah. trauma that I was eating it. I may not. I may right. come back as a bird. Who knows? But right. I'm saying you don't know mm -hmm. what you're gonna, what your payment, what your discipline is gonna have to be. Right. That's why natives they always think the animals mm -hmm. before they eat them. Mm -hmm. They it, that's why halal meat. They mm -hmm. always do a prayer and they thank the animal for their life before they eat it mm -hmm. because they feel 
that they're that the the method in which they're killing it mm -hmm. is quick, mm -hmm. is just, and it's purpose to why you're killing it. I'm not killing you for profit. I need you for food. Thank you for your life. Gotcha. Kill you. I'm gonna eat you now. Gotcha. You know, gotcha. I'm not walking around here in a fur coat making videos <laughs> off your skin <laughs> and eating duck confit. You know, on a plate with, right, right. you know, with some, some asparagus. That's mm -hmm. not the purpose. Mm -hmm. I have a family to feed. This is what's available to me. Mm -hmm. I thank you for your life. I'm going to eat it now. Mm -hmm. But that's their purpose of doing the prayer before, the halal version, doing the prayer before killing the animal. Mm -hmm. And natives always thanking the animal and mm -hmm. using the whole animal and not wasting any. Because mm -hmm. if I'm going to take your life, then I'm going to make use of that whole life. Mm -hmm. And thank you for your spirit. And maybe you'll protect me later. Mm -hmm. So there's a consciousness there of them knowing that their spirit and this vibration in which they're ingesting. Because if there was no conscious, why would you say a prayer before killing it? Right, right. If I, Everything I, I, is I read a quote, I read yeah. a quote once and the quote said, because it is, that is enough for me. Mm. So in other words, because God created it, I don't need another reason to get respected. Mm. If it's gotcha. created, if it has life, I respect it. I don't need mm, anyone to respect it. God, right. Because you, you weren't the one who created that life, right? So exactly. you have to respect it. Exactly. So the next question I want to ask you is, like, where's your family background from? I know you say you have family from Eastern Carolina. You have family from the Caribbean or <laughs> anything like that. Because, you know, I'm Haitian. You know, I, I got to rep the Haitian. I, I got to rep the Haitian. Yes. So what, what about you? Where's your family outside of the Eastern Carolina? And you can talk about, you know, how you grew up. And uh, I don't want to get in all. You can tell the people, you know. <laughs> I unfortunately don't know my background beyond the states. Really? No, um, my family, um, my, my 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 family history, my my, my diaspora mm -hmm. history lineage is broken. Really? It's broken. Yeah, I um, I'm a native of Queens, New York. Right. So I grew up with everybody: mm -hmm. Haitians, Jamaicans, yeah. Trinidadians. Yeah. Uh -huh. I've adapted a lot of family here um, in the states. Um, a lot of lot of family, a lot of a lot of West Korean, African friends, West Africa. a lot of Trini friends, mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of I have a whole Trini family, a okay. whole Trini, I mean, it, it, literally my family, mm -hmm. and um, a lot of African family here, mm. a lot of African family here, and Caribbean wise, Panamanians, every I know, I'm always a people are always attracted to me from other cultures, but right. I don't right. know what it is. It's, I don't, it's I don't, your <laughs> vibe. It's, it's the stuff that you know about holistic healing uh, about food nutrition because that's how we live in and a that's sense how cool. before before we come you know over mm -hmm. to here and kind of get indoctrinated i mean me being first generation yeah i kind of grew up in a different culture even though we were here and i i can see how it slowly changed yeah you, get what you I'm don't want to lose that that's mm -hmm. the main thing it's, it's I, I never understood when i would speak to um first generationers and they tell me that they don't speak their native tongue right I never understood that. Like, mm -hmm. why wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. You know, don't don't ever lose that history because I think back, just going back to my my grandparents. I've, I now all my I lost my last grandparent, my grandmother on my father's side, just November, just last year, and she's the last grandparent I had left. And I'm thinking about it, like I don't have any recorded documentation of things that I wanted to hold on to. Oh wow! It's all in my head, and if I don't. Mm -hmm. If I don't practice it and share it, it's going to get lost. Mm -hmm. And your tongue is your culture. Your tongue is your culture. Like, why wouldn't you want to speak your tongue? Why wouldn't you continue on speaking your tongue? Because there's stories in words. It is. It is. And I know there's a sense of conforming when you come over here and it wanting is. to fit in. It is. But if you come into a country that's a melting pot, you being you is the puzzle piece. Mm-hmm. You're, you you being you, who you are naturally, mm -hmm. is fitting in. Right. You know, who's to say who should be what? Because yeah. everyone that's here came here from somewhere. Yeah. But, it, I mean, honestly, I can tell you that just from a, being a little kid growing up, it didn't seem like that. You know, growing up in the, Haitian, in the house, in the Haitian culture and stepping out of the house, whereas American culture, going to school and stuff like that, you see what your friends are doing, mm -hmm. and you're like, okay, maybe this is what I should do, you know? And then <laughs> I see what my dad's doing. I'm like, Dad, that's not cool. I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You want to do what your friends are doing because you think that's the American culture, and you think that's the right way. But I think as you grow older, just like you said, you begin to embrace, like, what you thought wasn't right, yeah. but it was yours all along, you yeah. know what I mean? So like, when you're looking at your, when you're buying these store-bought ingredients, and they look good, and they smell good, 
Why does it smell so good? What is in it? Is it an essential oil that's in it or is it a chemical? Is it number red 40 that's yeah, in there? Yeah. Di dimethyl chloro something, something, something that yeah. was made in the lab. Right. If it has seven parts to the name, <laughs> I don't want it. I don't want it. Seven syllables, right? Yeah, I, was like, I don't want it at all. Because God created everything that we need right yes. here to sustain us. Wow. I can, wow. If it has a you can say that again. If you can name, say that again, I don't think people understand that. God created everything on this earth yep. that we need. Mm -hmm. And if it's something else that we, that we think we need that we can't find, we are mistaken. As simple as that. Mm -hmm. Every thing we need to cure and to heal and to protect our body, we should be able to go outside and get it on somebody's land. If not here, Great. somebody's land has it. Great segue to CMOS. So let's talk about CMOS. What is CMOS and how does it help when it comes to health since we're talking about holistic health? I think Dr. Sebi made CMOS so popular really? here. In the states, I was mm. I, I was already you know I'm from New York. Yeah. We was I was drinking Irish. I, I think you probably as told me about it. Somebody told yeah, me. I, I don't know if I found out I think about the, the whole consciousness now that has the the COVID and Dr. Sebi. Really? Yes. He that, if he was alive oh, today, he he should be a millionaire mm. because he he well he was already but he should have been like really up there because the whole world is on a CMOS crave right now. Really? Yes. Well, it, it should have been anyway. It, it should have been. Sea mm -hmm. um, moss is an algae that you find in the ocean. You're not gonna find it. In, you're not gonna find it in a river. You're not gonna find it in the pond. You better not find it in nobody's pool. <laughs> <laughs> but it's found in the ocean. You can get it in. You can get it in warm water. You mm -hmm. can get it in cold water. Different types. Um, Condors crispus. People always think that's the kind that you find in um, the islands where it's warm water. Wrong. That's the kind you find in cold water mm. um, out near like Canada and Ireland. That's where the name Irish moss came from. Mm. But sea moss itself is an algae. Mm. And this particular algae carries 92 minerals in it. Our body needs 102. Mm. So in this algae, you have 92 of the minerals that our body needs to sustain us on a daily basis. There's your multivitamin right there. Wow. There's another algae you can take in conjunction with it called bladder right. It'll give you all the minerals. What's spirulina? Is that that's one too? Spirulina or? is a blue green algae. Ah, really, really I use, good. I use that as well. On top of what you give me, I have mm. I have like a thing of spirulina. That's I use funny too. because I just made a spirulina sea moss for someone. Really? Mm. Wow. Mm. Okay. Tell us more. So with the sea moss, mm. like I said, number one, you get 92 of the minerals that your body needs. Mm -hmm. Number two, it pulls mucus out of the mm. body. What is Literally. mucus? <laughs> mucus, you know what? Mucus, people always think I get a cold, get mucus, but mucus comes from inflammation in the body, mm -hmm. food you Ooh, shouldn't eat, exactly, yep. that mm -hmm. build up inside your body, mm -hmm. your joints are aching, That's the inflammation and mucus are synonymous, mm -hmm. they're right there together, so when you start pulling that mucus out, you start feeling a whole lot Not, better, yep. yeah, yep. yeah, 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 mm -hmm. so sea moss pulls mucus out, gives you 92 minerals, it boosts your immune system because you're getting all those minerals. For men, it boosts your libido. Right, right. It gives you energy. Right. It's like a form of crack for some people. You know, I'm not, I hate to use crack as an example, but that's, yeah. the, that's the one thing people always yeah. say, like, would you give me this crack? I can't yeah. be still. I'm like, I've yeah, been yeah, working. Yeah. I've been in the gym all day. I'm not yeah. tired. <laughs> yeah, I think you convinced me to, to buy some CMOS because you was telling me all that. And I, I knew about it, but I was like, hmm. And then you put it in the, the smoothie. I was like, give me, uh -huh. let me get the smoothie. And ever since then, just like you said, I've always like, Get some sea You feel different when you not when you don't take it, mm -hmm. and it your gastrointestinal tract stays regular. Also, it helps for people that suffer from constipation or mm -hmm. IBS or mm -hmm. irritable bowel syndrome. It keeps things regulated in their gastrointestinal tract. Or if you have someone that's on medication, mm -hmm. they have an illness, and they have to take these medications to sustain their life. They form they, they develop constipation because mm -hmm. of these drugs that they're on. Mm -hmm. And so, if this is someone that's on medication, they can incorporate the sea moss in their system to help push push these things through while mm -hmm. they're on these medications that mm -hmm. they're currently taking. But sea moss mm -hmm. for your skin? Yeah. Oh my goodness gracious. Your skin is brand new. It, you just have 
clearer skin. Yeah, you can zoom on her skin and look at her skin. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we ain't gonna tell the secrets around here. We ain't gonna tell the secrets around here. But yeah, it clear uh -huh. gives. I'm, I actually makes a face grow. Mm -hmm. I'm, like your sugars are make a yep. face grow with the sea moss. Mm -hmm. Repair skin, clear skin, seals in pockets, and it's really good for your hair. Mm. Sea moss will make your hair grow without putting the sea moss. In your hair, mm -hmm. just ingesting it will make your hair grow. It's really good for nails. Mm -hmm. It's 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 one of those um, one of those things that is like it's 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 not it hasn't been a secret, but it hasn't been popular because it's it's not native here. People on the islands grow up on sea moss. You know, mm -hmm. as I hear my Trini family say, I'm not giving that to my son. They're gonna be around here yeah. wanting to do things. You know, the ah, libido, ah, ah, the libido ah, aspect. Ah, but then you know, you go, you go to Jamaica, they're, they're right, right. putting it up and they're drinking it for breakfast. Yeah, you know, so yeah, yeah. I go to the corner store all day, have an Irish moss. But you know, but mm -hmm. that is it. Cool. Really, it really is a mm -hmm. wonderful um, algae. But the you, in order to find it, you have to dive down into the ocean and get mm -hmm. it because it grows on the rocks. Mm -hmm. And that's where all the minerals are absorbed from. Mm -hmm. And you don't want any that's ever been developed in a pool because oh. that's man-made. They, they can, people can do yes, that. Yes, they recreate they recreate the environment for the sea moss. Oh. They go get real sea moss and they put it in a pool because sea moss will multiply on its own. Right. If it's there, so that's it's like that would be GMO, correct? No, very yes, GMO, GMO yes. very GMO. Right. Because they create the environment for it and it's falsified and it has all this salt buildup on it. Right, right. Who wants that when I can just go in the water and get it naturally from the source? But people confuse farming. Um, sea moss with pooling sea moss. There's nothing wrong with farming sea moss. When you farm sea moss, that means you take out an area in the ocean just for that sea moss. Mm -hmm. So you'll see um, certain people, like in South America or in the islands, they'll string the sea moss on a rope and put buoys to it so they don't have to keep diving so deep into the ocean, but they'll do it in an area of the ocean where there's still rock, mm -hmm. natural occurring rock. But that area is just for us. It's just for human content, just for us to feed off of. Mm -hmm. Because what we don't want to do is deplenish the supply that's in the ocean because the fish and the sea creatures down there need the sea moss also. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to mess up their natural environment and their food source. Mm -hmm. So farming, no, it's not bad to farm it as long as it's in the same ocean environment right. and it's just sectioned off for our consumption versus always going down in the ocean and pulling it and taking it away from the creatures that need it there. Got you, got That's you. the main thing. Got you. So now, like I mentioned before, you had a you have a cool store with all this stuff with the sea moss, with the, the sugar scrubs, and the potions, like I said. The potions, <laughs> like in the yes. potions. So <laughs> tell the people, if you're in Raleigh, you just need to come visit. You need to visit Earth Essentials if you're in the Raleigh and the surrounding areas. Come on. So <laughs> can you tell the people where to find you if they can't if they're not in the area like online where they can order your products? Definitely. And we are nationwide. We ship from Hawaii all the way to Maine. It doesn't make a difference if UPS, FedEx, uh, Amazon, or whoever can reach you, <laughs> we're going to reach you. But you can find us online at youreartheessentials.com. That's mm -hmm. your, Y-O-U-R, earthessentials.com. We're on social media platforms. Face well, we're on Twitter, too. I forgot about that. <laughs> Facebook. Um, on Facebook, you find us at Your Earth Essentials. Uh, Instagram, we are Earth Essentials. And Twitter, we are Earth Essentials. And it's all the dwarf face symbol, meaning the upside down Afro pic, the African looking Afro pic. So, mm -hmm. your Earth Essentials on Facebook, Earth Essentials everywhere else, youreartheessentials.com. If you're in the state of North Carolina, just drive on over here, take a visit, mm -hmm. hop, skip. I'm in the middle of the state, so you can get yeah. from me from any direction. In any direction. And, and Earth Essentials has EJ's gem stamp of approval because I use her products. How often am I in your store? You're in here faithfully. <laughs> faithfully. Faithfully. If yes. I don't see you, I'm wondering what's wrong. <laughs> yes, faithfully. I'm probably out of town or somewhere gone. Because if I'm around, I'm buying your stuff. You are. All right. You and are. you're working on a few blends right now, tea blends. Can you tell us about it? And we'll, and we'll show you guys live how she makes everything. We won't tell you everything she puts in there. Of course, we got to keep it a secret. But you can tell the people, what are you working on right now? Well, this particular tea blend is a supplemental blend. We have our regular herbal teas where we like to sip and just taste good and mm -hmm. drink. But the particular tea, yeah, empty, <laughs> empty cup. But the tea blend that we're working on now is a, supp well, two of them, two supplemental blends, one for high blood pressure and one for muscle repair. We had a gentleman that has torn his ACL mm -hmm. and he has to go to surgery and he wants to get a jump start on muscle repair. And the funny part with the muscle repair is how are you gonna drink a tea for muscle repair? Because 
amino acids need protein to reproduce. That's the only way you're going to heal a muscle is to grow the muscle back. Right. But there's protein in seeds, there's protein in beans, there's right. protein in vegetable Everything. sources, Everything. there's protein in herbs, and there's certain herbs that speed up that process. Mm. You want chlorophyll because you need that to help yeah. with the antioxidants to get things going. So you put that in a tea, and he supplements it with seaweed. Oh, my gosh. Seaweed is a catalyst for muscle repair, and everybody mm. doesn't know that. So we're making a special blend up for him, and he's going to put everything together and mm -hmm. take in. Hopefully, he'll heal fast. Okay. So anything you want to share share with the people before we go and look at everything? Anything that's coming up for you? Any projects? Anything that you're working on right now? Well, springtime is here. We do a monthly moon ceremony. Moon ceremony is when we all meet for a full moon ceremony out under the full moon, and we do positive affirmations of things that we need to really? release from our lives. Mm -hmm. Yes, when you have a full moon, you want to release negative things or, th or negative people or negative habits that you no longer need or are benefiting your higher good. So there's a, there's a, and you do that under the full moon. Under a new moon, that's when you do your positive affirmations to bring things in. We don't mm -hmm. do that as a ceremony because that's supposed to be a solo act. Mm -hmm. But under a full moon, it's always good to do it as a group to mm -hmm. have all those, because you need, you need that, you need that source. You need that, you need that positive people around you to help you rid negative things mm -hmm. from your environment. So we do that as a full moon ceremony. It's like an hour. Mm -hmm. We do our affirmations. We speak. We get on the full moon and we come back and we eat and we fellowship together and we go home. Mm -hmm. So that's every full moon here at Earth Essentials and we usually start at 8 o'clock for that. Mm -hmm. um, daylight savings time, we might push it back a little bit. Mm -hmm. We have Reiki. We offer, we have a Reiki healer here. Oh, wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. we have someone that does Reiki here. We do yoga through It's Yoga right now. Yoga is still virtual is training. Is this the room for, for yoga? Or this is no? the room for a lot of things. Because of COVID, we still, we, it's minimizing how many people we can have amongst us. So she does um, her It's Yoga through Facebook Live, and we can, we're, when, as the classes increase, you'll be doing it through Zoom. And then we're, we're posting online a calendar of events that's coming up, and we got a lot of things that's coming up. Mm -hmm. We got chakra one on one classes, mm -hmm. we have some herbalism courses that's been going on. Mm -hmm. And every Tuesday is Tea and Tissane Tuesday oh, wow. here at Earth Ascent. So you can come in, try some of our new tea blends, you can blend your own tea up, or you can just come and see what's popping. Maybe you don't drink loose leaf teas and you want to see what it's about. You mm -hmm. come and take a sip and enjoy some tea at Earth Essentials. Okay. So are you going anywhere if you want to share anything like that? That's what you're trying to get to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Earth Essentials is just what it says. We are all natural. And here at Earth Essentials, I hand make everything. We blend everything. If I don't make it, I have someone that makes it naturally. And our source for everything is Africa. And I trust the source because the source is Earth Essentials. Mm -hmm. We have our own farm in Africa where we grow everything. Anything that I can't grow here, we grow back in Gambia and in the Senegal. But Gambia is my second home. And I will be leaving in a few weeks to head back over there to get mm -hmm. things in the ground. The rainy season is coming. Mm -hmm. Get everything planted. I'll be over there for a few months, um, fellowshipping with my people, growing, getting my hands in the dirt. You all be coming to Earth Essentials in Africa soon, making okay. that, hey, making yeah. that trip can, over to come see us. We can check us. her out to see what's going on. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we're getting everything farmed and everything grown so we can keep everything in stock to sustain us until next year. We don't want another COVID situation where... I was unable to get my products and my mm. herbs and things that I needed because of, you know, being able to get import export blockages due to COVID. So we get enough grown, packaged up, ship it over, stockpile it here, That's dope. and then you just keep it moving. But we like we like the whole synergy of it all, bringing okay. it back home, keeping it all natural, and being our own source so we know where everything is coming from. I think that's pretty cool. I think it's time for you guys to come check out a blend, a tea blend. What do you think? I know it's time. Let's All go. Right, all right, let's do it. All right. I'm going to do my little outro, and you're going to go ahead and take care of business, right? Mm, that's so, right. So, look, we all go through the roller coaster of life. Why not have a guide to elevate your mindset? But do it the healthy way, the all-natural way, the earth essential way. You got it. All right. So, in this particular blend... See how pretty that is right there? Mmm. Looks good, tastes good, and good for you mm -hmm. right here. This tea blend here has a special herb blend that will lower blood pressure and help circulate the blood easily through the vessels. So if the person does their part with their diet and maintain their stress, 
They should not have to use any type of prescription drugs at all to stay healthy. And eventually they won't need this tea. So when we make loose leaf teas like this, you take one or two teaspoons and you put them in a tea bag, like a cloth cheesecloth bag, or a tea diffuser, a tea ball. You put it in a mug, boil your water separately, and then you pour that water on top of your tea bag and let it seep for about four minutes. You take it out and there's your medicine right there in a cup. Drink it twice a day and what else do you need? Nothing else but to stay healthy. Voila, you got Earth Essentials tea. <laughs> Same thing with this one. And this one looks a little funny, but the stuff that's in here, we got a moringa, we got moringa leaves. That is a miracle herb right there. It's, I don't know what moringa doesn't do. Somebody can call me and let me know what moringa doesn't do. Mm. Let me know. Cause as far as we know, moringa does everything. Moringa, we got ashwagandha root. We got some fenugreek seeds. This is going to help aid in the repair of the muscle tissue here. So that's all blended up and we're going to put a little extra in there for some anti-inflammatory gentleman's going to sip that up through his surgery and through his healing and his recovery and then he's going to call me back and let me know how he's brand new all over again mm -hmm. see my coaching skills go in and you know go mix it all in there yeah. with the tea you gotta think i gotta think it as a whole that whole body thought process but in here that's pretty much it that's what we have going on tonight we got our teas we made some fresh body butters in the lab everything goes down with our sea moss over here we clean it up at the end of the night and we start fresh the next day all from scratch all here at Earth Essentials.